Genesis 24, 1-67 Devotional Focus Verse But thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. Genesis 24, 4 Choosing a marriage partner is a major life decision, and it is vital that we let God direct in this matter. My parents' story is an example. In their late twenties, they were acquainted with each other through church-related activities. Dad observed Mom and was interested, but she rejected his initial approach. It wasn't that she disliked him, but she was not interested in getting married. She was dedicated to the Lord's work and felt called to full-time service. She was concerned that marriage would jeopardize that commitment. Dad, however, was persistent, and he said, Well, I've been praying about it, and I feel it's the Lord's will. She agreed to pray about the matter. After a while, Mom confided to her brother, I've been praying about this, and I want the Lord to say no, but the more I pray, the more I feel that the Lord wants me to say yes. Since her brother was a devout Christian, he encouraged her to keep praying and trusting that the Lord would show her definitely what he wanted her to do. One day after a youth service, she went to her brother and told him that the Lord had let her know that this was his will. Some months later, they were married. Rather than finding their marriage was an encumbrance, their union was a source of spiritual strength and blessing to both of them. They had almost 39 years together before God called my mother home to heaven. Isaac's situation was somewhat different than that of my parents. In the culture of that time, the father typically would arrange the marriage, and today's text gives a profound account of how God directed in the selection of a bride for Isaac. Abraham recognized that the choice of a bride for his son was crucial. He instructed his servant, Thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac, impressing upon him the extreme seriousness of the mission. When the servant suggested that perhaps the woman of choice would not be willing to leave her home and family, Abraham responded that God would send his angel before the servant. Clearly, this faithful man of God had unshakable confidence that God would direct. Abraham's servant set forth, looking to the God of heaven, to guide through an ordering of events which would indicate his direction. The servant's confidence was not misplaced. The miraculous unfolding of events which pointed to Rebekah as the woman of God's choosing was beyond question. The servant met with Rebekah's father and brother, who accepted the servant's proposal. Rebecca heard the proposition, and when the servant wanted to return home immediately, she said, I will go, without hesitation. Her heart had grasped the plan of God, and she was willing to follow it. While times and customs have changed, the principle found in this compelling account is timeless. In the realm of human relationships, none is more important than the one between husband and wife. How vital it is when we face this and other life-changing decisions in our own lives that we obtain God's guidance. Background Information Chapter 24 contains the beautiful and amazing count of the seeking, selecting, and securing of a bride for Isaac. When Abraham was 140 years old, he set about obtaining a bride for Isaac who was 40 years old. Arranged marriages were common in that culture. Abraham knew that God had called him to Canaan, and it was of prime importance to him that Isaac stay in that land. Yet Abraham wanted the woman to be God-fearing and not a local pagan. Verses 1-9 through nine tell how Abraham commissioned his eldest servant to secure a bride. Although the servant is not named, Many scholars believe it may have been Eliezer, see Genesis 15, 2. If so, he had been Abraham's foremost servant for at least 54 years, since before Ishmael was born. Abraham required his servant to vow that he would not pick a Canaanite woman. 
By placing his hand under Abraham's thigh, the servant was performing an ancient Eastern custom which pledged obedience. Abraham was not oblivious to the possibility that the girl would refuse to come, but he believed God would go with the servant and bring about his will. The account of the servant's expedition is given in verses 10 through 27. Abraham's relatives were living in and near Haran, which was between the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. Scholars believe the city of Nahor could have been to the southeast of Haran and may have been named after either Abraham's brother or grandfather. It was about 470 miles from where Abraham lived, and it took the servant approximately 17 days to travel there. The well mentioned in verse 11 was located in a central area that many young women frequented. The prayer of the servant reflects the impact that Abraham's faith had upon his household. The servant asked for God's direction to be shown through specific events transpiring in a specific order. The original Hebrew word for kindness was chist, which also means faithfulness to a promise and mercy. The servant's prayer was quickly and precisely answered. A camel can easily drink 20 to 25 gallons of water in a few minutes. So Rebecca volunteered to draw as much as 200 gallons of water for the 10 camels. Verses 28 through 61 tell of the servant's dealings with Rebecca's family. She was a granddaughter of Abraham's brother Nahor and her family was receptive to the servant's proposal. Rebecca herself responded positively to the servant's request that they leave for Canaan the next day. She was accompanied by her nurse Deborah and her damsels, the number of which is unknown. See Genesis 35:8. When they arrived in Canaan, Isaac was in the field meditating. There were probably no wedding ceremonies in that day, but rather great wedding feasts that lasted for days. God blessed the union with love. Conclusion Just as God directed in the choice of a bride for Isaac, He will guide us in important life decisions as we commit ourselves to finding His will. Genesis Chapter 24 And Abraham was old, and well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house, that ruled over all that he had, Put, I pray thee, thy hand under my thigh. And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven, and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my country, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son Isaac. And the servant said unto him, Peradventure the woman will not be willing to follow me unto this land, must I needs bring thy son again unto the land from whence thou camest. And Abraham said unto him, Beware thou that thou bring not my son thither again. The Lord God of heaven, which took me from my father's house, and from the land of my kindred, and which spake unto me, and that swear unto me, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land, he shall send his angel before thee, and thou shalt take a wife unto my son from thence. And if the woman will not be willing to follow thee, then thou shalt be clear from this my oath, only bring not my son thither again. And the servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master, and swear to him concerning that matter. And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master, and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand, and he arose, and went to Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nahor. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. And let it come to pass, that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also, let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. 
And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Betuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well, and filled her pitcher, and came up. And the servant ran to meet her, and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord, and she hasted, and let down her pitcher upon her hand, and gave him drink. And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also, until they have done drinking. And she hasted, and emptied her pitcher into the trough, and ran again unto the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. And the man wondering at her held his peace, to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight, and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. And said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Betuel the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said moreover unto him, We have both straw and provender enough, and room to lodge in. And the man bowed down his head, and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth, I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And the damsel ran, and told them of her mother's house these things. And Rebekah had a brother, and his name was Laban, and Laban ran out unto the man, unto the well. And it came to pass, when he saw the earring and bracelets upon his sister's hands, and when he heard the words of Rebekah his sister, saying, Thus spake the man unto me, that he came unto the man, and, behold, he stood by the camels at the well. And he said, Come in, thou blessed of the Lord, wherefore standest thou without? For I have prepared the house, and room for the camels. And the man came into the house, and he ungirded his camels, and gave straw and provender for the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the men's feet that were with him. And there was set meat before him to eat, but he said, I will not eat, until I have told mine errand. And he said, Speak on. And he said, I am Abraham's servant. And the Lord hath blessed my master greatly, and he is become great, and he hath given him flocks, and herds, and silver, and gold, and men servants, and maid servants, and camels, and asses. And Sarah my master's wife bare a son to my master when she was old, and unto him hath he given all that he hath. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. But thou shalt go unto my father's house, and to my kindred, and take a wife unto my son. And I said unto my master, Peradventure the woman will not follow me. And he said unto me, The Lord, before whom I walk, will send his angel with thee, and prosper thy way, and thou shalt take a wife for my son of my kindred, and of my father's house. Then shalt thou be clear from this my oath, when thou comest to my kindred, and if they give not thee one, thou shalt be clear from my oath. And I came this day unto the well, and said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, if now thou do prosper my way which I go. Behold, I stand by the well of water, and it shall come to pass, that when the virgin cometh forth to draw water, and I say to her, Give me, I pray thee, a little water of thy pitcher to drink. And she say to me, Both drink thou, and I will also draw for thy camels, let the same be the woman whom the Lord hath appointed out for my master's son. And before I had done speaking in mine heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder, and she went down unto the well, and drew water, and I said unto her, Let me drink, I pray thee. And she made haste, and let down her pitcher from her shoulder, and said, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also, so I drank, and she made the camels drink also. And I asked her, and said, Whose daughter art thou? And she said, The daughter of Betuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bare unto him, 
and I put the earring upon her face, and the bracelets upon her hands. And I bowed down my head, and worshipped the Lord, and blessed the Lord God of my master Abraham, which had led me in the right way to take my master's brother's daughter unto his son. And now if ye will deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, that I may turn to the right hand, or to the left. Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing proceedeth from the Lord, we cannot speak unto thee bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before thee, take her, and go, and let her be thy master's son's wife, as the Lord hath spoken. And it came to pass, that, when Abraham's servant heard their words, he worshipped the Lord, bowing himself to the earth. And the servant brought forth jewels of silver, and jewels of gold, and raiment, and gave them to Rebekah, he gave also to her brother and to her mother precious things. And they did eat and drink, he and the men that were with him, and tarried all night, and they rose up in the morning, and he said, Send me away unto my master. And her brother and her mother said, Let the damsel abide with us a few days, at the least ten, after that she shall go. And he said unto them, Hinder me not, seeing the Lord hath prospered my way, send me away that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the damsel, and inquire at her mouth. And they called Rebekah, and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. And they sent away Rebekah their sister, and her nurse, and Abraham's servant, and his men. And they blessed Rebekah, and said unto her, Thou art our sister, be thou the mother of thousands of millions, and let thy seed possess the gate of those which hate them. And Rebekah arose, and her damsels, and they rode upon the camels, and followed the man, and the servant took Rebekah, and went his way. And Isaac came from the way of the well Laharoi, for he dwelt in the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide, and he lifted up his eyes, and saw, and, behold, the camels were coming. And Rebekah lifted up her eyes, and when she saw Isaac, she lighted off the camel. For she had said unto the servant, What man is this that walketh in the field to meet us? And the servant had said, It is my master, therefore she took a veil, and covered herself. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. And Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent, and took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death.